if you want to take your guitar speed from this to this, you have to fix this huge weakness in your playing that traditional speed building methods, like the ones you're probably using right now, will never fix because they're the ones that put that weakness in your playing in the first place. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you what that weakness is, along with a whole new practice method you've never tried before that'll make it vanish like a bad dream where Ingve admits less can be more. How can less be more? It's impossible. And once that weakness is gone from your playing, then you'll be on the fast track to that elusive 200 plus BPM club so few guitar players ever get to. But to help you make sense of everything, we have to start with the number one thing almost everyone gets wrong about guitar speed. You see, years ago, I was still pretty new to guitar and I was watching John Petrucci's Rock Discipline video. Remember the one where he said that hilarious line? I was at 200, let's say that was difficult. I'll go back to you, John. And I noticed something about John's playing that left me absolutely devastated. And it wasn't that John was just faster than me. I mean, I expected that. It was, and this is gonna sound crazy now, John's playing reminded me of, wait for it, this old Chuck Norris meme. <laughs> now, I know you're like, what the f are you talking about? But seriously, the Chuck Norris meme, it helped me realize I was on the completely wrong track with building my speed. Let me show you. See, just like Chuck's face looks exactly the same no matter his emotion, John's playing stayed unchanged and looked and sounded equally flawless at every tempo he played up to his goal speed of 200. And he looked like he could play at that speed all day. Meanwhile, as I got close to my top speed at the time of around 110 BPM or so, my playing looked more like the declining health meter in that old Wolfenstein 3D game. As I got faster, my notes would gradually get sloppier, I'd get more tense, and my pick attack would get weaker and weaker. That's when I began to realize that playing as fast as Petrucci, Malmsteen, Gilbert, and Loomis, and the rest of the cool kids was not about just moving your fingers as fast as possible. In fact, as I tell my own students today, getting faster on guitar is only your second goal. Because think about this now, if I were to just wave a magic wand and just double your current top speed as it is, would you really be happy? Ooh, Ooh. what do you think, Greg? Um, uh, yes. No, you idiot. If I were to double your top speed with all of its tension problems, string noise issues, and all kinds of mistakes, how good would it sound? Yeah, it's gonna sound twice as shit, isn't it? Duh. So if getting faster is only the second goal, what's the first goal then? The first goal is to take your current playing at your current maximum speed, however slow it might be, and make it feel just as effortless just as clean and just as consistent as you want it to eventually be at your dream speed. And I know, I know this sounds like something you've heard a million times before, but, 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 this is where we get to that weakness that traditional speed building methods create in your playing. And to explain that to you, let me ask you a question. If I offered you this $100 for every time you run across this balancing beam without falling, which approach would you take to get the most money from me? A, walk slowly and gradually pick up speed until you're running, or B, just run as fast as possible on every rep and hope you don't fall. Now, I'll tell you the answer in just a second, and the reason why this balancing beam is even relevant to your guitar speed is because of this. See, the beam is the perfect visual for a rather nebulous guitar playing concept that not only limits how fast you play, but also how good your playing sounds at each speed you do play. It's a concept every guitar player thinks they intuitively understand until they realize that traditional speed building methods don't actually develop it at all. So what is it? Well, I'm talking about your level of control at a given guitar speed. And the way I define control is your ability to articulate the notes clearly, make the notes feel easy to play, and play the notes consistently enough without mistakes. Which should be ringing a bell because this is that first goal of guitar speed we talked about earlier. So when you do things like start slowly and gradually get faster and faster, all you're doing is seeing how far you can push yourself on your current level of control, but without doing anything to actually improve your control. And this is why your playing can start out something okay, maybe even good, but it gradually gets worse and sloppier when you try to go faster. Just like you become more likely to fall over when you walk faster and faster on a balancing beat. And then of course, if you just start playing even faster than your current top speed, you have zero control to begin with. And instead of even trying to stay on the balancing beam, your guitar playing ends up looking a little like this. So the real answer to how you take all my money in this balancing beam challenge and build a ton of guitar speed isn't A or B, it's C. 
make the balancing beam as wide as possible to make it easy for you to run across it or in guitar speak stop the gradual loss of control in your playing. That's how you're gonna reach the first goal of making your current top speed sound as good and feel just as easy as you want your goal speed to eventually feel and sound. Because once that happens, what do you think will happen to your current speed? Greg, would you like to try again? It's gonna stay the same. Uh, no, it's gonna jump, you moron, because there won't be any more flaws left in your playing that were preventing you from getting faster before. Do you get it? All right, so how do you actually do this? We're gonna put your playing through a few different tests at the tempos that you think you've already mastered. Now, these tests will intentionally make your playing a little bit harder at those tempos, and by doing that, they'll shine a spotlight at the parts of your playing where you don't have as much control as you need to have, and the best part is, because the tempos themselves will still be pretty slow, refining these control flaws will be easy. And as you fix each one, your playing will sound better and feel easier at that tempo. Now, unfortunately, there's no way for me to tell you the exact guitar playing control test you need without actually seeing you play, but fear not, because I am gonna show you three of my favorite control tests that are like the Swiss army knife of guitar speed because you can use them to get faster and cleaner with pretty much anything. We're gonna use this scale sequence as the example of these tests, and the first thing to do is to just learn it and get it up to a speed that's comfortable for you to play at even under pressure. And after you get the sequence under your fingers, right to that point where you usually tell yourself it's time to speed up, that's where you begin your tests. Now the first test is very likely to trip you up the first time you try it, and it'll make you realize you have way less control than you thought you did. And your goal for this test is to play through your lick with the picking hand only, in time with the click, at the tempo you were just ready to speed up from. And if you can't, which you most likely won't be able to on your first try, that means you don't have enough control over your picking hand at this tempo yet. You should slow down and find the fastest speed where you can do the picking motions in time with the click. By the way, avoid glancing at the fretting hand every couple of notes to try to visualize what the fingering is and from there decipher what the picking hand should be doing. That's cheating. Slow down even more instead if you need to, or heck, turn the metronome off entirely and just practice in free time until you get the motions right and then bring the metronome back in. If that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do. Now after you pass the first test, stay at the tempo where you were practicing the picking motions just now and turn off your amp. Now pretend that you're in the world's strongest pick attack Olympics, where you win the gold medal if you're the first to break a string by picking it hard enough, and start playing your sequence. What this extra hard picking will do is make the notes pop more, and either confirm that your hands are perfectly in sync, or it'll bring to your attention the parts of the sequence where your synchronization breaks down. It'll also help you notice if the pick is moving in your hand as you play, which is a big reason why your hands get out of sync. On top of this, it helps you spot tension issues in your fretting hand and the rest of your body that would normally only be obvious near your top speed. You can say that you passed this test when you can pick every note extra hard while playing in time, keeping your hands in sync, and keeping your fretting hand as relaxed as it normally would be. Now, for the third test, which I said is the most powerful, is what I call the dead stop drop down. The goal here is to work on that third element of control, which is consistency. And instead of just repeating the sequence over and over again, which can get mind-numbingly boring quickly, we'll simulate playing it the way it would really happen in the solo, where you only have one shot to nail it without the luxury of playing it 50 times beforehand. We'll start with your fretting hand by your side like this, completely out of action, and you're gonna wait for four to six metronome clicks, then at the very last second, bring the hand up to the fretboard and immediately, without any hesitation, play your lick once. Now all this is just one repetition, and you should practice like this for a good five to 10 minutes to do a bunch of these reps, each one separated by four to six metronome clicks, and doing all that while staying relaxed and while playing in time. Now stay on this third test until you can consistently nail the lick about seven to nine out of every 10 attempts. When that happens, then, and only then, can you finally increase that metronome. And then at that faster tempo, you do the three tests again until you pass them there and keep going like this until you reach your current top speed. And when you do, you will be stunned at how much better and easier everything will look, feel, and sound because you will have taken a giant step towards turning your top speed into your warm-up speed. But as awesome as this practice method is, there are still some non-obvious mistakes that can derail your progress and cause you to get stuck long before you reach your speed goal. Fear not though, because I show you exactly what they are and how to guard yourself against each mistake in this video right here, which I highly recommend you watch next. Oh, and if you want more help from me on how to build your speed, both free and paid, check out the links in the description of this video.